Good evening, and welcome to the State Road 519, also known as Fisk Boulevard, Concept Development and Evaluation Public Meeting, presented by the Florida Department of Transportation. This short presentation will introduce you to the findings that led towards the development of the preferred alternative. Afterwards, staff will be available in the City Council Chambers to answer questions, discuss the alternative, and allow you a chance to provide your feedback on the project. This meeting and the subject study is being conducted without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns relative to FDOT compliance with Title VI may do so by contacting either Jennifer Smith, the FDOT District 5 Title VI Coordinator, or Jacqueline Paramore, the State Title VI Coordinator. Their contact information is provided below. All inquiries or complaints will be handled according to FDOT procedure and in a prompt and courteous manner. The project began as a corridor planning study that was completed in approximately December 2016. This first step identified potential alternatives which were shown to the public and recommended to be studied further. The subsequent step is the concept development and evaluation study we are presenting here today. Here, we have further evaluated the recommended alternatives and identified a preferred alternative. With the input that we will be receiving from you, the preferred alternative will be finalized. It should be noted that the identified improvements will be implemented in steps. The initial steps include three different upcoming funded projects, a resurfacing, restoration, and rehabilitation project known as 3R Project, a project that will implement improvements at the Fisk Boulevard at Barnes Boulevard intersection and a traffic operations project that will evaluate in greater detail the improvements for the Fisk Boulevard intersections at Levitt Parkway and at Roy Wall Boulevard. Lastly, the improvements not included in these three projects will be part of the long-term improvements that will involve a drainage analysis, right-of-way survey, design, and eventually construction. As of right now, there is no funding currently identified towards these long-term improvements. The study area is an approximately 4.2-mile corridor along State Road 519. State Road 519 was originally a county road that was transferred to the FDOT in the 1980s. The study area begins at the intersection of County Road 502, known as Barnes Boulevard, and the I-95 northbound ramps continuing north until it reaches State Road 520, known as King Street. The corridor travels through the cities of Rockledge and Cocoa, connecting Vieira to the south. This study was advised by a project visioning team known as the PVT. The PVT is an advisory group, not an independent decision-making board, that assists FDOT and the consultant team by providing guidance on matters relevant to the study corridor. Our project partners include the various cities and agencies that represent the residents and business owners along the corridor. This study began by updating the existing conditions report, previously completed under the planning study. This update consisted of collecting recent data to reassess and identify potential changes. Data that was recollected included turning movement counts, bicycle and pedestrian counts, signal timings, corridor crash data, transit data, existing and future land uses, socio-economic data, infrastructure data, and environmental data. The results of this analysis can be found in the existing conditions report available on cflroads.com. 
an overview of the corridor revealed that conditions are relatively similar to the original planning study, although the corridor has experienced recent growth in which the data shows higher traffic volumes and higher number of crashes. The growth in traffic volumes was identified to be higher along the southern end of the corridor, approximately 15% higher since the original study, versus the northern end, which was only 2% higher. A future conditions analysis was conducted by projecting out the existing conditions to the year 2040. The growth was modeled using a 1.68% growth rate. Ultimately, the findings confirmed the original corridor planning study findings, which was that no widening is needed to maintain acceptable roadway conditions along State Road 519. The full results of this analysis can be found in the Future Conditions Report, available on CFLroads.com. The following slides will provide a summary of the key findings in the areas of Level of Service, commonly referred to as LOS, Right-of-Way, Bicycle and Pedestrian Evaluation, Transit Evaluation, Safety Evaluation, Specifically Crashes, and Traffic Control Modification. These highlights distill the findings of the full report. To help us understand the current roadway conditions along State Road 519, a level of service evaluation was conducted. The AM peak hour LOS analysis, occurring between 7 and 9 a.m., is shown along the top, with the PM peak hour occurring between 4 and 6 p.m. along the bottom. The LOS is represented much like a letter grade in school, with A being the highest and F being the lowest. This is an extremely simplified way to look at LOS, but provides quick insight into the performance of the roadway segments, as well as at each individual intersection. An acceptable LOS for State Road 519 is LOS D. The key takeaways from the existing LOS analysis include the deficient operating conditions of State Road 519 at the signalized intersections at Barnes Boulevard and at State Road 520, which are located at the beginning and end point of the study area, respectively. In addition, Barton Boulevard operates at LOS E during the PM peak hour. Lastly, consistent with the planning study, Two unsignalized intersections were evaluated, located at Roy Wall Boulevard and Levitt Parkway, both of which are operating at LOS F for the side streets. As we evaluate the 2040 condition, generally the same results occur across the corridor. State Road 520 and Barnes Boulevard are still operating at LOS F and E, respectively. The Barton Boulevard intersection has worsened to LOS F during the PM peak hour while maintaining acceptable conditions during the AM peak hour. Both unsignalized intersections are still operating at LOS F for the side street movements. There is no bicycling infrastructure along the study corridor. Pedestrian facilities are generally provided. However, there are some noticeable gaps at several locations. Due to the wide spacing of crosswalks, there are pedestrian crossings occurring at mid-block and at unmarked locations. Safety along the corridor is an important consideration. Overall, the number of crashes has increased since the original study, with both the averages per year and the number of rear-end crashes per year increasing. However, the number of injury crashes and fatalities per year has gone down. Crashes occurring along the corridor cannot be attributed to one specific area or type, as the accidents vary throughout the study area. 
There are currently four bus routes that run along portions of the corridor. These include Route 1 between Titusville and Vieira, Route 4, the State Road 520 connector, Route 6, the Coco and Rockledge circulator, and Route 8, servicing West Coco. Generally, transit stops within the study area consist of a bus stop sign and, in some instances, a bench. These benches are usually located in the grassy area between the road and the sidewalk, lacking ADA accessibility while also lacking amenities such as shelters. Now that we have outlined the key findings, let's look at how they have been addressed in the preferred alternative. The highlights presented on the preferred alternative include improvements to sidewalks and trails, bicycle lanes, lane widths and raised islands, bus stop enhancements, addition of curb and drainage enhancements, ADA compliance, and traffic control modifications. Presented inside the City Council Chambers, there is a complete layout of the corridor within the study area. Staff will be available at the various workshop stations to discuss the preferred alternative with you and answer questions. Comment cards are also available to record your feedback. The sidewalk improvements located along the corridor include closing the sidewalk gaps to ensure continuous pedestrian facilities throughout the corridor and reconstructing the four-foot-wide sidewalks to widen them to a width of six feet. In addition, there is a section of the Brevard Zoo Trail within the project limits, which has been included as part of the long-term alternative. Lastly, a pedestrian refuge median is proposed along State Road 519 south of Barbara Jenkins Street. As part of the 3R project, bicycle lanes will be added along the corridor except at a few locations where moving the curb would be required. However, the long-term preferred alternative includes bike lanes along the entire length of the study corridor. Bus stop improvements include ADA accessible landing pads. Amenities such as benches and connections to sidewalks, among others, are also included as part of the preferred alternative. North of Rosa L. Jones Boulevard, adding curb and gutter is proposed as part of the preferred alternative. This additional improvement will result in significant drainage implications. Therefore, this improvement will be included as part of the long-term plan for the corridor. ADA improvements along the corridor were also identified. These improvements will be implemented as part of the 3R project and will include curb ramp upgrades such as detectable warning pads and special emphasis on crosswalk pavement markings. Traffic control modifications were analyzed to see how the operations at these intersections could be improved. At the Barnes Boulevard intersection, improvements will be included in the next FDOT work program update, which will be further explained on the next slide. Signal warrant analyses were performed at the Roy Wall Boulevard and Levitt Parkway intersections along Fisk Boulevard. For detailed information on these analyses and the identified improvements, please see staff inside at the workshop station. There are three upcoming projects that will immediately follow this corridor study. The first of which is an operational study conducted by the FDOT's Traffic Operations Unit which will further evaluate the potential improvements at the State Road 519 intersections at Roy Wall Boulevard and Levitt Parkway. The second project is the upcoming resurfacing project in which the design phase is funded for 2019 and the construction phase is funded for 2021. Lastly, the Interstate 95 Barnes Boulevard intersection project which will add a second northbound left turn lane, a second westbound receiving lane, 
and a second eastbound left turn lane off the interstate. This third project is currently unfunded and anticipated to be funded for 2024. Thank you for your attention during this presentation. At the conclusion of this presentation, please proceed into the City Council Chambers to review the preferred alternative in more detail. The project team will be on hand to answer questions and discuss the preferred alternative. Comment cards are also available for you to make your opinions count. The graphic on the right shows the recommended station route, which is also available on the back of today's handout, available at the entrance for those who did not receive one. Project information is available for review on www.cflroads.com slash project slash 437241-1 and updates will be posted as new information becomes available. Once again, that's www.cflroads.com slash project slash 437241-1. Please proceed into the City Council Chambers at this time and thank you again for coming this evening to the State Road 519 public meeting.